Thank you very much for the invitation and th thanks a lot uh, for the introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very happy to, to be here and uh, <coughs> also because, I mean, as uh, Maxi said, uh, uh, since the beginning of my career, <laughs> even, even before the 
postdoc, I've been involved in this aspect of interdisciplinary. And this, this is a, a place where, I mean, this is a key aspect. So from this point of view, I'm really happy to be here <coughs> and to give uh, my presentation here. Uh, so today, uh, the, top, the, the title is uh, Noise and Information in Economics and Financial System. So uh, mm, mm, I decided to present this uh, talk here, one, mm, for several reasons. One is because uh, mm, it's a topic that, uh, at least to me, is very interesting. Uh, and also because I would like to see your reaction to this view, which uh, could be mm, perhaps of uh, a different level. It could be uh, just, I mean, this is trivial, or this is uh, unusual, or this is uh, very interesting. So uh, I'm really interested uh, about uh, your uh, reaction to that. Uh, so let's see what, what is the idea. Uh, uh, I will just recall a, a few uh, uh, aspects of uh, noise, uh, signal and information, algorithm complexity and finance. I guess, I mean, most of you know very well this type of, of, uh, of topic. But then I will try to present uh, information, the aspect of information, from, from a perspective which is not so typical uh, among physicists. It's more common uh, uh, for economists. So, um, and due to the fact that I have interacted from uh, now several years also with economists, I think this is a, an aspect that we should keep from them, or at least the type of, of perspective. Then I will recall some approach that as a physicist has been uh, uh, proposed to deal with this problem. One is random matrix theory and the other uh, is the concept of proximity-based network or just uh, the use of data mining procedure to extract information, what uh, uh, Maxi was recalling in terms of information filtering. And then the second part will be about a study that we did, an empirical study, on, uh, on how individual investors react in the financial market and how, I mean, the aspect that we see uh, um, from, let's say, the analysis of the data are reflected in an empirical analysis of the way single investors act, act in the market. I don't know how many of you have uh, any background in economics and finance. Is there any? No one. Uh, <laughs> so, so then I, I should let's say, and then I will say a few words also in, in this direction, not too much, because otherwise the time uh, is not enough. But uh, if you have a question, stop me, and I will try to answer. If something is not clear. So let's start from uh, the very basic, noise. So noise is the word. Each of us uh, uh, has interacted with noise. So it, if we see noise from a linguistic point of view, it comes from uh, the acoustic phenomena, so our way of, uh, of uh, detecting uh, sound is separating uh, sound from noise. And, but noise has been generalized, so these are the few words. So we have noise in many, especially we are, as a scientist or as a technician, we have noise uh, um, always. And what is noise? But what is noise? We should think a little bit more on the concept of noise and see uh, uh, some characteristic of the noise. And this is uh, one of the challenges of this talk. Uh, the, the most common view is this one here. So you have a signal that could be analogic or digital. And uh, on top of the signal, you have something that you typically do not want. So it, it, it's a disturbance. It's something that you do not control. In physics, I mean, typically what you want to do is to have a, very, a fully controlled experiment which means that you try to control everything and when you, uh, try, when you have full control of what you are focusing, then uh, you try to minimize the level of the noise and then uh, what you are looking for in, in an experiment or in a, in a communication is to have a, an high ratio of this signal to noise ratio. So when, when you are an experimentalist, and I was an experimentalist, you are looking for this uh, mm, I ratio just to separate the signal from the noise. Uh, but there are other aspects, and the other aspect concern uh, information theory. I mean, you, are, you, you deal with information theory, so 
then you try to quantify when you have a source of something, like uh, in, uh, in the generation of a given signal, when you have a source of something, you try to estimate how complex is the structure of this, uh, or, or how varied is the structure of this uh, uh, source. It could be DNA, or it could be uh, uh, a text, or it could be uh, even sound, if you, uh, if you uh, let's say, um, categorize uh, a given continuous source in a, in, a, in a digital alphabet, in an alphabet. And when you, when you have uh, your sources, you can estimate uh, the entropy and the redundancy. So uh, the redundancy of a source uh, measure, I mean, uh, the, the repetition that you can, or, or let's say, the, uh, the things that uh, are in the system or, or the quantity of information that you are storing per unit of, uh, of letter. So, you might have uh, signals that are highly redundant, or you might have signals that are not so redundant. And uh, this is uh, one of the first studies done by Shannon himself in 51, concerning the prediction of the entropy of printed English. So this was the estimate, and this was uh, obtained by, in terms of the, uh, of the redundancy, <coughs> uh, this, uh, this entropy. So the, one minus this quantity is the redundancy. This is entropy. The entropy starts uh, for uh, an alphabet of 27 letters at this uh, um, level uh, in terms of bits. It, it is decreasing in terms of n gram. So the study was just to considering, uh, let's say, two letter text, three letter text. These are called n grams, perhaps. And uh, he estimated the uh, this level, and then he estimated the, the, the level of the redundancy of the, of, of the entropy of the uh, printed English by just doing an experiment with his wife. So, so they just uh, uh, um, uh, uh, used uh, sentences of, 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 uh, of, of printed English, and then they deleted a certain number of, uh, of, uh, of letters and they, uh, uh, from an experimental point of view, estimated the, what was the minimum level of letters that they should maintain so that they could uh, interpret the text, which means that there was uh, some level of redundancy in the text. And they estimated this level of, of the redundancy, and from the redundancy, the entropy. Because, uh, as many of you may know, estimating the entropy of a source is, is not a so simple thing. In principle, it is simple, but when you want to estimate uh, uh, the entropy for, uh, uh, let's say, for a large set of, of, of possibility, of a, or, or, or for a long uh, um, n-gram, n uh, the, the number of uh, the space of the n-gram explodes, and then it is very difficult to, to have an accurate estimation of the entropy. So this one was uh, one way. So you can associate it to any sequence of, of symbols a certain degree uh, of entropy and a certain degree of, uh, of uh, uh, redundancy. And then, uh, and then you, this type of approach merged with, uh, with uh, another, the other approach of uh, uh, computability theory of Turing, and there was the proposal of the algorithm information theory. So you, you can analyze a string and and you can classify the strings concerning the complexity of generating them, the string. So, so uh, uh, how long is the program that it is able to, uh, how big is the program that it is able to reproduce the, se the sequence is an indication of the algorithmic complexity of, of the sequence that you are analyzing. From this perspective, uh, <coughs> why I'm saying of, of, of that? Because the point is, uh, uh, we want to analyze something which is produced by, by, by an institution, because I, con I, mean, I consider the markets as institutions, so it's a human institution. And this, in this human institution, what, uh, I mean, what is the structure? You have many, many actors, and these actors interact, I mean, in the past in this way, and today in, in this other way, through an, uh, an electronic infrastructure. And they interact, and what is the, uh, uh, why they interact? For many reasons, because there are investors, 
there are speculators, what are called, there are, um, yeah, there are um, uh, companies that are looking for financing, uh, for, for obtaining uh, uh, money from, uh, from other people. So, so there, there are, in general, different classes of, uh, of uh, um, participants that have a different uh, uh, scope. They interact all together. And, and what is the outcome? The outcome is the transfer of, uh, of value from, uh, from, uh, uh, from some of the participants to others. But uh, the synthesis is given by what is called the price discovery, the finding of the best price of a given financial asset. So there is uh, one way to see to financial markets. Of course, uh, you, can consider, you can see the financial market from your own perspective. So you, 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 you might be only interested to to the speculation part or to the or, or just to, to the investment part or to the fact that you are going there to to obtain uh, financing but uh, uh, the, the synthesis of this institution is that uh, over time you have uh, uh, the price discovery what is, I mean you have uh, an impersonal a collective uh, 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 production of a single indicator which is the price for the financial asset. Uh, how this work and, and what are the, uh, uh, let's say, the byproducts of that? I mean, there are two aspects, uh, and the main aspect is the concept of market efficiency. So due to the fact that you have uh, so many players, what you see uh, is that, uh, I mean, in, in the best realization of the financial market, what you see is that the market is, present uh, a high degree of what is called efficiency in finance. What is market efficiency? Market efficiency, uh, uh, it, it is formalized in this way. A capital market is said to be efficient if it fully and correctly reflects all relevant information in determining the security price. So the idea is uh, you have this uh, institution. This institution is conveying uh, uh, and receiving information. And uh, these many people that are uh, acting in the, in the system uh, uh, discover the, the, the best price. And, uh, and due to that, this means that uh, out, if, if we want to model that aspect, uh, uh, what type of, uh, of uh, price dynamic should we expect? And this was one of the questions related to, to the idea of market efficiency. And uh, before, uh, the, let's say, the theoretical setting of market efficiency, there was uh, already uh, uh, a view in, uh, from, uh, um, proposed by a famous economist, Friedrich van Eyck, in '45, that uh, uh, he interpreted this process, this. Uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, collective process of the discovery of a single indica indicator, the price, uh, as a process which is performing information aggregation. So it's something uh, a bit different from what we are um, familiar. We are familiar to information processing and information uh, transmission. This is information aggregation. So you have something which is uh, typically delocalized and distributed among uh, many participants and this knowledge which is distributed among uh, many participants is synthesized in a single indicator. So this is the process of uh, information aggregation. And uh, how it works? I mean, let's see some simple example that can uh, uh, give us uh, 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 the feeling of what's happening when, uh, uh, when there is uh, information aggregation and when there is uh, 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 and when the market uh, get, uh, start to be, in quotation, efficient. And the, the main uh, uh, argument is the argument of arbitrage opportunity. Uh, do you, is there anyone that uh, knows this, this concept of arbitrage opportunity? Just one. So let's, uh, le let's talk about that. So uh, the idea is, uh, <coughs> I mean, uh, uh, we need to evaluate something, and this is done uh, not just by a panel of, of, of experts, as you might think, but uh, is done by uh, 
by giving uh, an indicator to, to the asset, the, pro the, the, the value, the price. And, uh, uh, and due to that, uh, there might be different people. I mean, th there could be a people just uh, trying to evaluate or other people that just uh, look at the market. And, uh, and uh, by looking at the market, you can uh, imagine a strategy that will give you financial gain continuously and without risk. If uh, one of such strategies exists, it is said that you have an arbitrage opportunity. So let's see, let's see a simple example, a simple geographical example in the spirit of Van Eyck. Let's imagine that, you, uh, that there are two cities, St. Louis and Miami, uh, and you have uh, a certain good, wheat, that at a given time uh, has uh, for the same uh, type of product, uh, a price which is 1.30 US dollars in St. Louis and 1.45 uh, US dollars in Miami. I mean, the fact that you see different prices geographically could be rational in the sense that, uh, let, let us imagine, for example, that uh, production is more close to St. Louis than Miami. Then the difference could be, could be uh, in price, could be, could be rational. But if you look at, at, uh, at the state of the market and verify that, for example, transporting and storing uh, one kilo of, of wheat from St. Louis to Miami, it costs this amount of, uh, of money, then you can imagine an arbitrage opportunity. You, you buy in St. Louis and sell uh, immediately after, or after a short period of time in Miami, and pay the cost for transportation and storing, and then you obtain a, a, a gain. So this is an arbitrage opportunity. And there are a lot of people <coughs> in the markets which are looking for financial, for arbitrage opportunity. When they do that, what is the effect of that? The effect of that is that if someone notices that, you are increasing, and, and you act in this way, you are increasing the demand in St. Louis and the supply in, in, uh, in Miami, which means that uh, you will force the price to go up in St. Louis and decline in Miami. So this is the indication that typically in an efficient market, the exploiting of an arbitrage opportunity it produce uh, uh, actions in the direction of its disappearance. So if, uh, if the process is such that, I mean, this, the, the, there is freedom to, to act in, in the direction of arbitrage opportunity, by exploiting arbitrage opportunity, there is a pressure to, to homogenize the price geographically. And, uh, and this is an example, it's, it's, uh, in terms of uh, spatial uh, dishomogeneity, but you can also uh, um, try to uh, make the same type of line of reasoning in time with respect to a single asset. And when, when this is done, this means that, uh, I mean, if the, 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 the dynamics of the price could be uh, as now uh, constrained in, in terms of the rapidity of the change, uh, the fact that uh, you uh, expect uh, absence of arbitrage opportunity or rapidity of the action of the arbitrage opportunity in the market imply that the price of a financial asset must be very similar or indistinguishable from a random time series. So, and this was formalized by uh, a Nobel Prize in economics, Paul Samuelson in 65, when, uh, when he, 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 he proved mathematically that uh, if you imagine that you have a properly anticipated price, uh, then uh, this implies, under, let's say, general uh, hypothesis, that you, you, you should observe uh, something which is very similar to a random process. The simplest uh, process, which was uh, proposed in 65, and then, uh, I mean, it has been generalized, was uh, what is called the geometric Brownian motion. So, uh, uh, a geometric version of the Brownian motion. So uh, we hypothesize information aggregation. We hypothesize uh, heterogeneity of the action in, a, in an institution like a, a financial market. 
And this implies that uh, the uh, time dynamics of, uh, of the price of a financial asset should be not so different from a random walk. So at first start, it's very disappointing. I mean, we are, we are just, uh, uh, let's say, listening uh, 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 on uh, the TV or just on the, on the web continuously. What, I mean, what is the dynamics of, uh, of a certain financial index? and so on and so forth. And this is very important for the, for the economy and for the society. And in the end, it's not so different from a, from a random walk. So from the walk of just uh, uh, a drunk guy, which is just moving as, as a random walk. So uh, it's only, I mean, uh, is this the end of the story or there is more? I mean, in fact, when we look at the profile of the, this is the standard Poor 500 index, one of the <coughs> most famous financial indices for the US market. Uh, the period is uh, from 84 to 89, this is the, the major crash of 87. And, and this is what is called the volatility, which means the, st the local standard deviation of, of this increment. So it is not really a so simple stochastic process like the geometric Brownian motion. It's, uh, it's more sophisticated. But uh, the aspect of uh, the absence of linear correlation is there. I mean, it's immediately there. I mean, if, we, if, you, if you compute the autocorrelation function of this uh, daily return, uh, uh, these are hourly, uh, hourly return, you see that the, uh, the, the memory of the correlation goes to zero at that time in, in a few minutes today in less than a second. So it's really pretty, in quotation, efficient. So, but is this the meaning that uh, we, because we associate random work with uh, absence of information? And, uh, uh, and in fact, this, this was one of the disappointing points of the algorithm complexity theory. Because in algorithm complexity theory, uh, when you try to evaluate the complexity of a random work, you discover that it has maximum complexity because you cannot reproduce uh, the random walk with, uh, with, with a compact uh, uh, program. So uh, in a sense, uh, one of the, um, in my opinion, the, the, the uh, let's say, the surprise, it, it, it's, uh, 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 it's uh, so striking because we associate, uh, we, we are implicitly, uh, uh, assuming that when we have uh, something which is similar to a random walk cannot be rich in terms of information. But this is not the case. I mean, there could be information and also in something which is very similar to, uh, to uh, which has a profile which is very similar to a random walk. And uh, this is what uh, I will try to convince in the, in the next uh, 30 minutes. So due to that, uh, I mean, there have been uh, some debate, you know, one, a very famous book is this book here, you see, over one million copies sold, a random walk down Wall Street. So the, this is just the, the view of uh, the market efficiency and market efficiency um, mm, mm, relation with, uh, with uh, stochasticity and uh, random walk. And, but there is also, um, there are also other views, like a non-random walk down Wall Street. These are, I mean, these are very famous economists, and Law is at MIT, and McKinnon, I think, is in, at Yale. So they are, they are, they are um, highly respected economists, it's not, not just, uh, 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 let's say, the book, one of the books that anyone can, can write down. So the point is just to focus on the fact uh, the, ab the absence of ad arbitrage opportunity requires that uh, the profile of the price should be not so different from a random walk. Is this uh, uh, meaning that there is no information? Uh, we, see, we see immediately, I mean, when we work with uh, financial time series, we see immediately that there are other aspects, uh, which are, uh, when, you, when you look at the single evolution, the single evolution is not so different uh, from a random walk by high. I mean, if you're familiar with random walk. This is Procter & Gamble uh, pri log price 
I mean, there are some technical reasons why one should consider the log of the price and not the price. But I will skip this type of, uh, let's say, details uh, because I, I, I want to, to give the general view for the moment. Typically, you use the log of the price. Uh, so the profile of the log of the price is very similar to the profile of a random walk, but sometimes you see the presence of correlation. And this is something that it is well known in finance. So you, uh, when, you, when you invest in a portfolio of stocks, it, I mean, it is important that you take care of the correlation among the stock. This correlation could be pretty high. I mean, uh, if we, one computer the correlation of these two time series, the synchronous correlation between Coca-Cola and Procter & Gamble, I think this was 1990, many years ago, the correlation was 0.7, so very high correlation. And, uh, and when you do for a series of stocks, these are 100 stocks, and this is just uh, a color code representation of a correlation matrix, you see that there are stocks which are highly correlated with all the others. Highly correlated means, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say, red uh, color, and others which are poorly correlated with, the, with all the others, and something intermediate. So certainly, you see, I mean, the system store part of the information, if not in the single time series, because it is hard to, to see any linear correlation, out autocorrelation of the time series, but, uh, but, yeah, but you see something which is uh, present in terms of cross-correlation. So some information is there, and in fact, uh, there is certainly information, but there is also a noise view. And uh, 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 if we ask ourselves, uh, is there any noise in the financial market? The answer is yes, if we look at the, at the system as, uh, let's say, uh, uh, as uh, uh, scientists which are describing the process in terms of stochastic processes. But also when you look uh, at the system as an economist, and this is a famous economist, Fisher Black. Fisher Black is the father of the Black and Scholes uh, approach of, uh, of pr uh, to, to price the uh, options over, over, a, given, over a, a, a given financial asset. So he, he, he is one of the father of quantitative finance. And uh, in 86, he wrote uh, this, uh, this uh, paper, which is uh, titled Noise, and, uh, and, uh, and gives another view of noise, which is, uh, I think, also important for us. Noise in the sense of a large number of small events is often a causal factor, much more powerful than a small number of large events can be. So this is something which is typical from the perspective of people which are working in finance. When you, when you, are, uh, uh, when you are involved in the process of the price discovery, you will, I mean, uh, typically there is a flux of uh, actions which arrive in the market. And this uh, flux of actions is typically a flux of, of um, several, uh, probably independent or not so independent actions of different uh, heterogeneous uh, traders which are acting in the market. So you have a, many, uh, a large number of small events. And you never know whether this type of large number of small events are just uh, uh, showing you something which is uh, 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 easily interpretable or it is something that it is uh, that, uh, uh, but rather, in, in many cases, it is hard to interpret what's going on. Because you have many, many different uh, uh, actors which are acting in a way that could be coordinate or not coordinate. So you don't know whether, uh, uh, or it is very hard to distinguish whether uh, you can extract information from this action or it is just uh, noise. Ju noise uh, here means uh, and in fact, economists call this type of events uh, idiosyncratic events, means uh, something which is, uh, 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 which is related to, uh, to motivations which are not common motivation among uh, all, the, uh, all the actors which are participating to the price discovery. And, uh, but the presence of noise makes trading in financial market possible. Why? because uh, it is adding what is called uh, in the market liquidity. 
So the fact that, uh, the fact that uh, uh, there are many people trading there for different reasons, then give the possibility that when you, when you as a trader need to do some transaction in the, in, in the market, you will find a counterparty. Because if all the people would uh, think in the same way, then uh, the demand would be always in the same direction. And this will make uh, the system hardly uh, uh, working. Because there will be people that would be interested, for example, to buy, but no one to sell just a minority. So the fact that uh, different uh, reason uh, will, uh, 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 will uh, motivate uh, the traders to act differently makes uh, the trading in financial market possible and efficient in most of the cases. And, uh, <coughs> but uh, the conclusion is that most generally noise makes, so noise has also an, a, a lot of other uh, implications in finance and in generally makes it very difficult to test either practical or academic theory about the way the financial economics market works because uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, several of these uh, 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 decisions to, to trade could be idiosyncratic then uh, uh, then uh, are masking the part of information which arrive in the system so I mean, uh, I'm saying so what is the conclusion of all this uh, uh, overview? The conclusion is that uh, uh, when, when we look at the, uh, at the, uh, at the market, uh, uh, as, at the financial market as a complex system, uh, we notice that this complex system is performing information aggregation, but this information aggregation is done in the presence of a lot of noise sources. Uh, so it's a very important information aggregation institution which uh, nevertheless must act in the presence of uh, large idiosyncratic motivation, which means it must act in the presence of, of a lot of noise. It is even more complex, and, uh, and the other level, level of complexity concerning the way it works. So uh, typically modern financial market works through uh, uh, the, uh, the presence of an electronic order book, where you, where you store uh, your willingness to buy or your willingness to sell a certain amount of, uh, uh, of financial asset at a given price. So typically you can cancel uh, your, your, it is called limit order, or you can uh, buy, so, so you can send the market order and buy uh, what was offered at the best offer, or you can sell. So there is this con discontinuous uh, activity that could be pretty fast. And, and then uh, one could say, I mean, this, is, this means that you have a huge amount of information arriving in the, in the, in the market. Already due to this type of mechanical uh, action, the fact that uh, the order book give the opportunity uh, to, to the seller and to the buyer to meet the one with the other and to see what, uh, what, is the, um, I mean, what are the requests. So typically, I, for, for each uh, uh, financial asset, you will have a, a, certain, a certain number of uh, orders, buy orders or sell orders. Of course, people are willing to buy at a low price and uh, the, the owners want to, to sell at a higher price. So when the two prices match, there, there will be a transaction. This is another aspect. Typically, I mean, we, uh, we uh, I mean, for people not uh, frequently involved in financial market, we think that there is always a price. But typically there is a, let's say, a, a, an offered price, a, a price offered to buy or to sell. And these two prices could be different. And only when there is a transaction, there is a real price. Uh, but uh, the other aspect which is very important is, uh, is uh, due to the fact that this is the way uh, the price discovery works in modern financial markets. Uh, should we imagine that uh, the traders are just uh, 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 sending their, uh, their decision to, to buy or to sell 
in, in, in a way which is extremely transparent. So, I mean, I, I did my decision. I think that this financial asset is worth uh, this type of, uh, uh, this amount of, of uh, money. And then I send uh, an order to sell or, 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 or to buy. I mean, this is not the way it works. Why? Uh, of course, I mean, there are people which are se sending the orders because they want to do. But they continuously, re, uh, let's say, uh, reconsider their action when they, when they do that. And this is due to the fact that uh, this type of activity, it's important to do just to get uh, the transaction done. But on the other hand, it should be done uh, in, in a way which is not too much informative to the others. What is the meaning? Why I'm saying that? Because of course, if you decide to to buy, on the other on the other uh, side there are the ones which uh, which are want to sell, and if someone go there and said, I mean, uh, the price is at the moment is very convenient. I want to buy, and I want to buy a million dollar of that. So this has uh, this will have a huge impact on the market because I mean typically there is not not this amount of money immediately available but when in the market arrive a, a so huge order this is just uh, releasing information about the validity of that uh, 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 of that financial asset which means that acting in this uh, let's say naive way would uh, release information would be interpreted by the other participants as a release of information so the participants are there and are noticing this type of, uh, of uh, uh, actions. And, 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 the, and people that are, uh, let's say, focused on buying or selling the, um, uh, a, a given financial asset are, are, uh, asset are, uh, uh, are uh, extremely sensitive to this type of actions. And they are just uh, watching the market just to detect this type of, uh, of information release. For this reason, there is what is called the liquidity paradox. That typically, I mean, the information which is present on the side of this order book in terms of, uh, 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 of willingness to, uh, to buy or to sell is not uh, the real uh, liquidity. I mean, people are not uh, releasing this information. So they they are entering into the market only when it is absolutely necessary to do that and only for the fraction of, uh, of, uh, of uh, amount that they think will not be noticed in the market. So typically this process of price discovery is done uh, uh, with the attempt to use the information but not release the information that a single trader might have. So you will always have around the mean, the noise. Uh -huh. And this is a kind of elementary noise, but you can also have jumps, because due to the fact that if, for example, uh, let's say people realize that uh, uh, the price that they, uh, they, they, they are offering is uh, probably become too much, they just cancel of that and they move uh, the, their price uh, much, much lower. <coughs> okay, so typically, we do not have uh, even revealed liquidity and then revealed uh, uh, information, but, but there is uh, the action of this latent liquidity, latent interest. Mm. So uh, we can, so, so then certainly it is true that the, the system works as, an, uh, as a performing information aggregation. We can see that uh, by doing uh, something very simple, for example, this, this is the matrix that, uh, the correlation matrix that I was showing you before. And uh, it is not so easy to uh, associate, uh, let's say, structured information to this type of, of matrix. But if you do something that could be even simple, this is just a hierarchical clustering, so a form of data mining. You do hierarchical clustering and you consider the different stocks and the colors of the different stocks here are associated with the economic sectors of the different companies. And this matrix here is, is, is the same matrix as before, but with the order of the hierarchical clustering. And you see clusters, and you can associate to these clusters some economic, uh, some economic uh, um, sector. So 
indeed you have uh, information aggregation. This is quite clear. You have a clear information which is present there. You can extract, uh, for example, with this, uh, with this approach, or you can associate uh, what are called uh, 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 proximity-based network or, or uh, <coughs> similarity-based networks. And you see, and you see groups of, uh, of stocks. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, these are what are called the tick symbols. So this uh, uh, this AIG, the, a company which was very famous for, for the financial crisis. These are uh, this is Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, uh, uh, Wells Fargo, Merrill Lynch. Those, these, all these are bank banks, uh, American Express, and uh, these are uh, technology companies: Cisco, IBM, uh, Oracle, and so on. So, with this type of uh, information filtering, you detect information which is present. So, so the time series are. Uh, our time series very close to random walk, but they uh, incorporate information. This information can be extracted, for example, by, by performing hierarchical clustering or by using uh, the idea of random matrix theory. You are probably more familiar with random matrix theory. So in random matrix theory, the idea came from Wigner in 55. So the, the point is when you have uh, something that you don't know, I mean, which you have a lot of idiosyncratic aspects, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a random system. So you might have a, a matrix which, is, uh, which has random elements. These are symmetric. And then you analyze the eigenvalues. And when you analyze the eigenvalues for a large matrix, this is just a computation with, for a matrix which is uh, which has, uh, 1,000 times 1,000 elements, and, and you compute the eigenvalues, then you find uh, an attractor for the probability density function, which is the semicircle, the so-called semicircle distribution. So you observe, uh, you observe uh, eigenvalues which are, um, which are dispersed, but the dispersion is controlled by a given functional form. So this is just for a uh, for a, for a Gaussian matrix, normal. So you, uh, in, in the 60s, uh, some mathematicians also considered uh, not, not just a matrix, but, but a multivariate time series. Gaussian, I mean, the first uh, result was for Gaussian random variables. And uh, the idea was, uh, can we have uh, a conclusion also for the probability density function of the eigenvalues when we have uh, a finite number but large of elements with, with a finite number of records uh, but large and this ratio is a finite value. So uh, this can be computed and the output is what is called the marchenko pasteur distribution which is given by that. Which means that the eigenvalues are around the value of 1 for uh, the eigenvalues of the correlation matrix of the multivariate variable and variables that have uh, T records which are Gaussian variables. When you do that, then you compute the n times n correlation matrix and then you extract the eigenvalues, you find something that it is very well described by, by the um, marchenko pasteur distribution. So you have uh, eigenvalues which are around one but you have a dispersion between a minimum value and a maximum value. So this is something that could be used as a null model. I mean, in statistics, a null model is just I mean, what you expect under given stochastic assumption uh, uh, that you can uh, compare for with what you see from empirical data. And this is what was done uh, in uh, in 1999 by two groups, the group of Jean-Philippe Bouchot and the group of Gene Stanley for the, for, the, um, for the correlation matrix of a large portfolio. These are the original results of the group of Jean-Philippe Bouchot and it, it, uh, they were computed with, uh, I think, uh, order 400 stocks of the, of the standard port 500. So, what you see, I mean, this, this is just the empirical one. There is a, a very large eigenvalues, and then a group of eigenvalues around one. 
and uh, in particular there are a few eigenvalues in this area here and something around uh, around one which is not we, I mean and this part here is not too far from the profile of the Marchenko pass two. and then you can do some let's say refining of the of the uh, fitting uh, and uh, uh, and see that typically I mean what you see it's always this type of profile this is just the uh, these are the probability density function of the of the um, of the records of the eigenvectors for the different uh, uh, for the different associated to the different eigenvalues and typically again they are distributed uh, uh, in a um, as a, a bell-shaped curve around zero, with the exception of the first uh, eigenvector, or the of the eigenvector associated to the first eigenvalue. So, so typically, what you see is that uh, you have a large uh, eigenvalue, and this is uh, just uh, a reflection of the fact that you that there is a collective movement uh, of, of, of the global uh, uh, stock exchange. This is something that it is not uh, uh, it is not described by the random matrix theory, and this is something that uh, uh, tell us that uh, there is a global movement of the financial market. Uh, typically, then there is a, a fraction of five percent of the eigenvalues which is incompatible with the random matrix theory. And uh, but uh, the other part is this part here, in which you see, I mean, uh, what you see for a uh, for a random matrix, so, so for a random multivariate matrix, what you see for the real data are not too different, which means that uh, for, for the part of information which is uh, associated to the, to the eigenspace uh, uh, related to these eigenvalues, distinguishing between uh, a random process and uh, the real process is really hard. So, uh, uh, this, this is a system where you have uh, the simultaneous presence of, uh, of important signals which are, which are conveyed in the, in the time series of the, of the price uh, and also of idiosyncratics uh, uh, and then noise, noise evolution of, of, uh, of, of, the, of the price also and, uh, and uh, the spectral analysis and the random matrix theory tell us that some part can be easily detected, this part here and this part here, and the other part, it's really hard to detect because it has the same profile of just a random process. And this, uh, in my opinion, uh, explain, uh, I mean, this type of, I, I'm sure that sometime you saw this picture. So this is a famous picture, a cover of The Economist in 1997. 1997, there was, was the big crisis uh, of financial market in Asia, and uh, and here there is the, a cartoon in which uh, you see participant to the market. So there is a sentence: "I've got a stock here that could really excel, really excel, excel, sell, sell, sell," and then the panic start to sell. And but the sell, sell, sell. This madness, uh, this is madness. I can't take any more. Goodbye, goodbye. Buy, 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 and so on. So you might have this simultaneous presence of signals and something uh, that looks as signals, but may be noise. And this is, uh, I mean, you see this uh, in the profile of the spectral density of, of, the, of the eigenvalues. So uh, in this system, noise and information are interlinked. They are not separated, or just something in which you can simply extract uh, the one from the other. So, so this system are pretty different from what we are um, familiar with. We are familiar with the case in which we are looking at, this, at the signal, and we try to, um, let's say, maximize the signal with respect to the noise background. And, uh, uh, and this is typical for the, for the, um, for the physics uh, investigation or for the technical uh, aspect of uh, information transmission. But in this uh, uh, system that are performing, uh, uh, let's say, emergent uh, information aggregation, you have uh, no 
uh, alternative to the fact that, uh, that you have a part of the information that looks like uh, noise, a part of the noise that looks like information. And... Uh, Sorry. Yes. So this, what you were saying now is contrary to the efficiency that you were explaining before. No, because the efficient. You have noise that completely blows up and then uh, doesn't reflect the other... Uh, Oh, in fact, I mean, uh, 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 you're right in the sense that uh, uh, if you, <coughs> I mean, if you are, uh, let's say, um, if you consider the market efficient, efficient theory as, uh, let's say, the, um, the full description of the, uh, of the market, you should not, you should never observe uh, what are called bubbles. And in fact, there is a debate whether bubbles are real bubbles or not. We saw that bubbles exist. So in a sense, uh, the view, at least of econophysicists, <coughs> is that market efficiency, I mean, aspect of market efficiency are really uh, truly observed in markets, in the sense that, uh, for example, you see immediately the absence of linear autocorrelation. This is something quite clear. But uh, an interpretation of market efficiency in, in, in the sense that uh, uh, the, the, the system is, uh, is uh, uh, it's so efficient that it is able to, uh, to avoid any type of bubble in, 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 in things, this is not the view, at least uh, we as uh, economists have with respect to the market. But this is the view of the economists, of some of the economists. I, I skipped some of the transparency. You know, in, a few years ago, there was uh, um, uh, the Nobel Prize in Economics was awarded to Eugene Fama, which is the main, uh, uh, the leading uh, economist for market efficiency, and to Robert Schiller, which is the leading economist against the, the market efficiency. <laughs> uh, and, uh, uh, but there are motivation for that. The motivation for that, in my opinion, is that uh, you have this type of, uh, of joint uh, uh, um, let's say, presence or, or need of the fact that uh, due, due to the way the this, this system is organized, and the way the system is organized is related to the fact that information has a value, and then uh, people are uh, um, acting uh, w with a lot of energy in the direction of, of, of trying to be the first to disentangle information for noise. This implies that the things could not be so simple. And uh, how much time do I have? Because five minutes. Five minutes. So I think uh, I was a, a bit slow, so I will go very fast on that. So then uh, the idea was, uh, can we have uh, some, let's say, empirical evidence on the way people are, are uh, uh, mm, processing uh, endogenous and exogenous information that originated into the market. So for doing that, you need the information concerning individual investors. So to make a long st story short, I mean, it's not so simple to obtain this data, <coughs> but in some cases you can do. Uh, and, and you know, I mean, in this uh, business of big data, uh, you need to uh, have access to the uh, right sources, and these sources uh, come uh, from uh, Finland indeed, from uh, a company or from an institution in Finland. So what you see is that uh, this system, you have a huge amount of heterogeneity. These are the number of transactions that uh, this individual uh, investor do, does, uh, individual investor do in, uh, during a, a year. Sometimes they do uh, hundreds of thousand transactions. In other case, they do just one or 10 uh, transactions. Uh, for the news, you can extract the news, uh, uh, consider the news uh, distributed by a, an information provider like Thomson Reuters and analyze what was going on in a, in a given period of time and then uh, uh, do that uh, during the day and, uh, and analyze uh, how different investors uh, perform inside the market. Perform means uh, decide to buy or sell. And uh, I mean, we have information concerning uh, uh, the legal entities, so we know if they are a company or a financial company 
or governmental organization or non-profit organization, individuals or, or uh, foreign organizations. So the numbers you see are quite different. So you have a heterogeneity, a very high level of heterogeneity, and also the amount of, uh, of transaction that they do is quite uh, heterogeneous. So heterogeneity is uh, another aspect of the system. And uh, we, what we did was just to define some primarily buying state or primarily selling state, so that uh, we were analyzing discrete state of the investors. And this was done uh, uh, to track uh, uh, market activity of the single investor, the single groups, and also the price dynamics and market indicators. So we, have, uh, we can consider, for example, uh, volatility, which means uh, the uncertainty that you have in the, in the return. Uh, and this is a proxy of volatility. So this is an, an, uh, an information concerning the state of in uncertainty inside the market, or the return, I mean, uh, which is indicating uh, the fact that the market was going up or down during the day. And we also counted uh, the headlines about uh, the financial asset, what was Nokia. At that time, Nokia was uh, the largest stock in this uh, um, Nordic Stock Exchange uh, by capitalization. So it was a very important stock. And uh, so this, is a, this indicator is an indicator concerning uh, exogenous information. And this is an indicator concerning the state of the market, endogenous information, and also this. And these are in indicators concerning the, the decide to buy, sell, or buy, sell, or the, let's say, polarization of the market. The fact that the market decide, I mean, the category of the investor on that market decide to buy or sell on that day. So we also analyze the sentiment of the, uh, of the news, just to see whether the sentiment had an impact. And, uh, and we characterize the, the type of uh, action that was observed uh, there. The activity is not homogeneous for all the day. So there are days in which there are a lot of different legal entities acting, so the, the, and other days that so, uh, um, let's say, a smaller amount of uh, investor acting. And but the main point is that, uh, again, let's say, what, what is happening from outside, the news, and what is happening inside are not independent. And this can be seen. And sometimes something that it is occurring in the market goes into the news and then comes back into the market. So, so uh, this is another aspect in which, uh, again, information or the idiosyncratic part, uh, I mean, uh, cannot be easily disentangled. Because sometimes you, uh, uh, the state of the market originated news, or some news originated a particular state of the market. So, so then you need to, to, to do some specific action to try to disentangle the two. And uh, just to have a visual view of what's going on, so this, uh, these are five years, you see I mean, this is the flux of news concerning Nokia. You see that the news are often arriving uh, in a bursty way, very localized way. And uh, the volatility could be also very different. And uh, the, the activity of the different categories, here there are only two categories, financial, I mean, these are professionals, and households, these are just individuals. And you see that they, sometimes they act the same day, but in other case, uh, they act at, or at least not at the, at the same level, at the same level, at the same day. But typically, there are special days and there are normal days in the market. And uh, and when uh, we look at uh, at the imbalance, uh, we see that uh, there is also a difference between professionals and and uh, and let's say individuals. Individuals sometimes take a very polarized view on what's happening in the market, but this is not so common for, prof for professionals. So they typically try to, to have uh, or to act in both directions. And this is one of the complexity of the process of the, of the price discovery, because uh, the, the, there, are, there are different type of professionals, <coughs> because the professionals are not uh, only acting in the market in the direction of, of taking uh, one of the position 
with respect to be buyers or sellers, but uh, some of them are acting uh, in terms of what is called market making. So they are <coughs> buying and selling on, 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 they are taking both sides and they are trying to, to make money from, uh, from the difference of what they sell and what they buy. So this is uh, exactly the activity that, you, that people are, uh, that banks are doing when, uh, when they provide, for example, uh, foreign currency. Right? They, they are acting as a market maker. So they take both positions. So, sorry. Yes. I guess in the, the two financial and principal sellers and buyers, they have time that are different. I imagine that yeah. financial. Yes, I, I, I mean, mean th these, are, these are daily data. And you see, this is the trading unbalance uh, in total number. These are absolute indicators, so in total number. When we rescale for the, uh, and, and we normalize to, let's say, to the 100% of the acting people, you see here, you see that, uh, for example, the household have a memory of the position that they took that could last a few months, and this is something that you don't see in the financial, in the financial uh, action. So the time scale is also different and heterogeneous. And uh, when we analyze uh, the way the activity is related to uh, endogenous and exogenous uh, indicators. What we see is that the different categories are primarily reacting uh, to endogenous uh, uh, indicators, to the volatility. Uh, they are also reacting to the exogenous one, but these uh, values here, you see, are larger than that one, with two exceptions, and the two exceptions are governmental organization and non-profit organization. So again, in this type of things, you have heterogeneity and you might have uh, even that, uh, that different category are uh, acting in different way and they, are, and they are processing the information in different way. And this uh, richness of the system, in the end, uh, uh, let's say, contribute uh, to, to, to a better global efficiency of the price discovery process. And I think uh, I should stop here. Um, I'm uh, uh, just, uh, let's say, stating a few conclusions. So uh, um, a key aspect of economic and financial system is that they are heterogeneous open system and they are processing information. The knowledge of information is typically providing a marginal advantage and therefore its process uh, 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 of information aggregation is complex and not trivial at all. Uh, tools from uh, statistical and theoretical physics and non-conventional data mining uh, are suggesting information filtering proce procedures that are quite effective. And, uh, and uh, as an example, we saw that the trading activity of uh, individual investors are affected by both exogenous and endogenous information and the way they treat this information is different depending on the category of, uh, of, uh, of uh, investors. And the two sources of information are typically interlinked. So this is uh, a type of uh, process of the information that I think uh, we as a physicist we should consider more. It's a bit different from the typical approach, but uh, it's certainly as rich as in the other case. So thank you very much. you mentioned the best price and that finance uh, theory should uh, estimate this best price and I was wondering how nowadays the, this adjective best is defined and uh, the second question is that I didn't get exactly how do we define mathematically uh, information uh -huh. in this like the definition with Shannon uh, entropy and uh, where is the probability distribution that defines information uh, how, I mean, the way in finance works is that you know uh, there are um, people, there are professionals 
which are just evaluating uh, the value of a given financial asset. And they give, uh, uh, let's say, advice. And in fact, there are many advice to buy or sell uh, a, given, a given stock price. So, so the point is that in principle, you can imagine that uh, you try <coughs> to evaluate and there are some recipe for that. You see, I mean, the, let's say the, the, um, the asset that a given company has, uh, and you see the uh, incoming uh, uh, money flow in a given period, uh, and then uh, you, by using all these ingredients, you, you make uh, an estimate of the value of that uh, company. Uh, of the point is that it is not so simple, or, I mean, or not so, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, there is no consensus on what to uh, uh, use for this type of evaluation. There is some consensus, but not a full consensus, which means that uh, these type of evaluations are just indications, you know, what are called the fundamental values. The other, the other idea is just, uh, I mean, and other people are just saying, let the, let the market decide what is the best price. If, uh, I mean, uh, the market uh, uh, are really efficient and there are no problem with bubbles and these type of things, then, uh, then uh, <laughs> this is the best uh, that we could do. So, uh, and the point is that, but we have uh, so indication in both, uh, 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 in both directions. So sometimes we see that uh, what the markets are concluding with respect to something, it's, it's really very far from what, uh, let's say, at least the conventional uh, way of, uh, of uh, uh, the estimation of fundamental price is, is suggesting. And this, uh, this was the reason why, for example, Schiller and Fama uh, uh, were, were saying uh, completely different things. During the, um, uh, the, uh, the IT bubble of 2000, Schiller was saying, I mean, this is just the irrational exuberance. <coughs> the, the title of his book is Irrational Exuberance, which means that sometimes this collective evaluation could go somewhere that, which is pretty far from, uh, from, uh, from uh, what was the system. But on the other hand, I mean, uh, the market is trying to anticipate things. And in, in a sense, uh, uh, if we see retrospectively the, 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 uh, things, I mean, uh, uh, at that time, uh, uh, some, some of the uh, stocks were over-evaluated, but nowadays we saw that the main uh, stocks, of, at least in the US market, but also in many other countries, are uh, uh, IT stocks. I mean, stocks that were related to the active Google or Facebook uh, or Amazon. It took uh, 20 years more, but in the end, I mean, uh, th there was the need of, uh, or there were indication in the direction of something completely new. And due to the fact that the market should discount the future, sometimes the discount uh, is correct. In other cases, it, it, uh, uh, it produces bubbles. So the second question was uh, concerning, let's say, the entropy and the information. Uh, I mean, you can just say, I mean, uh, the point is that if you have a, uh, if you have, uh, a signal and you associate with this signal uh, uh, a discrete alphabet, and then uh, you consider the, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this signal as producing as a source a given string, then you can compute uh, the entropy of, uh, of that uh, string. How do you do that? I mean, uh, uh, of course, there is not a single way. Uh, when, uh, I mean, the, the simplest things could be just considering uh, word of uh, a certain number of letters, you know? And then, in this case, which is the alphabet? Which is the, which is the alphabet. Uh, well, you have alphabet of, uh, of, uh, of, just, uh, of just a single letter. These are the n-grams. Yes. So, yes. so you, can have, uh, uh, you can have a world of one gram, which are the letters. World of two grams, which are two su successive letters. Three grams, four grams, and so on. And, and this is, I mean, when you associate uh, a given vocabulary to, to the text. There is not a single way to do that, that because uh, because you can also, I mean, for example, in, 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 uh, in, uh, normal, in uh, let's say, natural languages, you have also structure on that because you have words, you have uh, particles, you, uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have also, uh, let's say, structure of sentences. So uh, the way you 
define your alphabet, it's a, it's, it's a bit arbitrary. But once you define your arbitrary, uh, your, your alphabet, then you have associated an entropy, and you might have associated uh, uh, information on that. Of course, the information here, it, it should be better to use uh, entropy, because information means that you are also connecting uh, uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, the signal that you receive to something else. Which is, finance, which is the alphabet that we're using? So you have uh, several series of prices, yes. and then? The price, then, then the, it depends on, on the way you, you code it. Because, uh, for example, you can uh, just uh, use uh, a, a free letters alphabet, go up, go down, and stay uh, invariant. Ah, okay. and, uh, and then you, for, daily, for daily things, or for, uh, or for weekly things. So uh, the alphabets are pieces of the dynamics that you Yes. There was another question, Emilio. The, well, like, it's also in the direction of the information. You started with the Shannon plot and all that, but then all the examples you have shown is on linear correlation. You say that the, the efficient market shows that there is, well, it's fulfilled because you have a decay of linear correlations immediately. You show again values of linear correlation matrix. Is that any, any of those conclusions change? If you change, if instead of computing linear correlation, you are computing something else? No, for example, information. Yeah. Uh, yes, it changed. Yeah. Uh, so, so, <laughs> so, but but I mean, uh, but for example, detecting I don't know transfer entropy. I mean, a lot of people are also estimating transfer entropy or or Granger causality and so on. It's not so. I mean, uh, of course, you have information. So my my point is that you have information. There. I'm not. Uh, let's say, uh, I'm not. Uh, <coughs> uh, I don't want to give the impression that my point is that uh, uh, the system is uh, completely efficient. I mean, this is, this is the view of the economists, or some of the economists. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the system uh, is close to efficiency. So they have, uh, I mean, the presence of the, uh, 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 of, uh, the fact that there are, um, that, that the arbit arbitrage opportunities are limited or disappear quite quickly. Uh, as, a, as uh, the effect of uh, making the linear correlation disappear immediately. But this does not mean that all the non-linear correlation disappear also. And in fact, they don't. So the system is pretty complex. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but let's say the level of, uh, of uh, efficiency is enough to, to make uh, the dynamics of the uh, of the price very close uh, to, to a stochastic process. Right. Uh, could you repeat why the maximum value is the market? I mean, it is just a, a jargon. The, the, the maximum eigenvalue is related to the fact that there is a, there is a, a common movement. And in fact, if, if you remember, the eigenvectors are as, uh, as a composition which is uh, which is all uh, in, in the same direction here. Of course, this is arbitrary. It could be positive or negative. So, which means that the components are all of the same type. So, so there is a movement which is a collective movement. This collective movement is explaining uh, about 30% uh, of the variance. So this is something. So, so the stock market, I mean, in the typical dynamics, there is a global movement which is for all together. But this typically affecting all the stocks, with some exception. I mean, uh, for example, gold stocks are not affected. But I mean, these are details. The, la the largest part I is, um, is this way. So, so there is a general movement. But on top of that, there are details which are different for different sectors. Regarding yeah. uh, the model that you explained at the end, uh, is capable to introduce long range correlations in the volatility? I mean, the fact that you have these different investors <coughs> in a different way in front of the information and the volatility, it does induce in a natural way correlations in the volatility? I mean, having, having different time scale, in a sense, uh, uh, is a candidate in the direction of, yeah, of something like that. But uh, I don't know. I mean, my. My honest answer is I don't so know. As you know, it's, it's a difficult point to explain that you use this yeah. action and gas model yeah, yeah, yeah. introduced by hand gas. Yes, yes. And another question is, do you analyze 
the third point you have news, but you also mentioned that you are doing some sentiment analysis. Yes. So, uh, have you explored what is more uh, influencing on the behavior, the positive or the negative news, or, or what is or the sort of classification of the news? You mean uh, the, the asymmetry? I mean, we didn't go in, into these details, also because uh, typically the news are uh, they already have an asymmetric profile. Mm -hmm. So it is pretty hard to disentangle the asymmetric profile of the news and the asymmetric profile of the, of the affect, uh, 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 let's say, or the effect that they have uh, uh, on the system. So we, we didn't do. OK. Last fast question. Sorry, the uh, as a opportunity, as you said, that the markets will tend to make to disappear because of more efficient. But I think that you can also try to hide it to try to explore it in a later. Yeah. yeah. So how will, how will this affect your decision? No, and in fact this is the point whether the let's say of course uh, the point is if you do not act too much in the uh, if you do not exploit too much the arbitrage opportunity, this will be less visible. And if you are the only one that, that, that you are acting in this direction, it will benefit for a longer time. But on the other hand, it is not completely rational to do that because, because uh, typically you don't know whether others are also noticing uh, the, uh, the same arbitrage opportunity, which means that uh, uh, if you are too slow, perhaps some <coughs> other will benefit from that. So there is an incentive to act as, as soon as possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank